Hello, I'm Matu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at Night. Now news and details. The National Handloom De Development Corporation Limited today conducted a seminar on the dissemination of government schemes of the Ministry of Textiles. The seminar was conducted at TE Hall in Woka on May 24. During the program, T. Langkon Sen Tsang Lao, additional Deputy Commissioner of Woka, said skill development is much desired for youths of the present generation. Youths need to have a skill and knowledge for livelihood guarantee. He said that school curriculum should impart job-oriented knowledge besides traditional textbook knowledge. He appreciated the huge turnout of enthusiasts and weavers in the district. He urged people to not only avail the schemes and benefits but to work the scheme successfully, which will help their family income and the societies progress. The National Child Development Council has launched a free training program called Paperless English Training or PET for school and college students who find it difficult to speak English despite having studied English for many years. This was stated today by Yomi Chon Ragu in Kohima National Child Development Council Faculty Come Admission Coordinator. She said that Nagaland is first in the northeast to avail the training. She said that in addition to spoken English training, general knowledge and skill development are also included in the program. She also informed that daily lessons and activities will be shared directly with the learners through WhatsApp. It, its module gradually helps the students to talk in English through games and puzzles without learning grammar. The National Child Development Council has also invited applications from Women No Age Limit for the new online batch of teacher training courses in child education that includes certificate in international preschool education, Montessori education diploma in international Montessori education amongst others with age and qualification criteria. Days after the collapse of the dome of the new assembly building, the high-powered committee has decided to have a third party audit to find out the reasons which led to the collapse of the dome of the new assembly building at Mawetang Diang in New Shillong Township. Addressing media after a meeting with HPC Assembly Speaker Metpa Yang Do said that the audit will look into the safety and strength of the other portion of the building, including the left wing, right wing, corridor reception area, chamber of the speaker and chief minister, and also the ground floor and the basement. Liang Do further stated that the HPC has decided to approach experts from IIT Guwahati, IIT Kolkata, and IIT Delhi for the job. We have uh, discussed at length today about the incident and we have taken some decisions today. Uh, the first one is to ensure that uh, no outsiders will be or unauthorized person will be allowed to enter the building because of some safety measures. 
The other part is to cover the entire open area of the doom portion which has collapsed to ensure that there's no water leakage in the building. Now we have uh, decided also, which is very, very important, a third party audit who will give us uh, the reason why or the reasons of the collapse of the entire construction. Earlier in the day, Megla Chief Minister Konrad Sangma, along with Speaker Met Pa Liangdong, inspected the under construction building of the State Legislative Assembly, the dome of which collapsed recently. Meanwhile, the Congress has demanded an independent inquiry into the dome collapse. Meghalaya Pradesh Congress Committee Working President PNCM, along with former Minister Deborah Marak, expressed concern over the incident, stating that people's lives could have been at risk. The dome, which was recently installed at the new assembly building at Maiwidyang Nyang, New Shillong Township, collapsed on Sunday at around 12.30 a.m. But fortunately, there was no casualty in the incident. While speaking to the media, PWT Building Executive Engineer Ransom Sudnga said, the cause of the collapse of the dome is because of the design since the weight of the dome is so heavy. The flood situation in Assam has slightly abated even though the death toll rose to 25 as one more person died and over 6.5 lakh people remained affected by the deluge across 22 districts, an official bulletin said. According to the daily flood report of Assam State Disaster Management Authority, one person in Silchar of Kuchar district was lost to flood waters. With this, the total number of people losing their lives in the years Flood and landslides had gone up to 25 across the state, it said on Monday. ASDM has said more than 6,50,400 people are hit due to floods. Nagao is the worst hit district with over 3.51 lakh people in distress, followed by Kachar and Hojai. At present, 1,709 villages are underwater and 82,503 hectares of crop areas have been damaged across the SEM, as DMA said. It further said authorities are running 656 relief camps and distribution centers in eight districts. The bulletin said the Army par Paramilitary Force, National Disaster Response Force, STRF, Civil Administration, trained volunteers and fire and emergency services personnel have evacuated 110 people from various flood hit areas. Pramaputra's tributary Kopili and Dharamtul and Kampur are flowing above danger marks, the bulletin stated. Days after irked protesters torched down the Patar Drava police station over custodial debt of Nagao local fish seller Nagao SP Lina Dole on Tuesday addressed a press conference over the incident. Addressing the press conference, SP Dole stated that the investigation is underway and a total of six persons have been arrested so far, while 12 persons have been released after they were found to be innocent after an interrogation. SP Dole further stated that it was a pre-planned attack on Patadrava police station as the irked protesters could be seen with a Molotov cocktail to torch down the station. Dole added that out of six accused, two persons have previous criminal records and about 6,500 addictive tablets have been seized from one of the accused, Mojipur Raman, resident. SP Dole urged the DC to look into the matter of illegal encroaches coming into the district. SP Dole stated that the incident could have been averted had the officer in charge of Badadrava police station informed the matter on time. I detained Kurisilu Barajan. आरु सौजन एरेस्ट हुए से बारो जनों खुद पुष्ट कोरी थे तो तक लोग जिसे तो इन्वॉल्वमेंट देखा न बोले तो खेत तो लोग आजी एल्डिया हुए से आरु सौजन एरेस्ट हुए से तो अठम दिन आखने जून तो सर्च कोरी सिलो ये असामी होकलों घरों असामी बुरों घरों टाइमी जून बुर सर्च कोरी सिलो 
তাতে আমার সার্চটো কমপ্লিট নহলে আমি আকো যা কালি আমি আরো সার্চ করল সার্চ করতে আমি তাত এটা হ্যান্ডমেড রিভলভার পাইছো আর চারিটা নাইন এম নাইন এম গুলি আর সেইটো পাইছো আমি আর সিক্স থাউজেন্ড ফাইভ হান্ড্রেড নিশাযুক্ত ট্যাবলেট মজিবুর রহমান তো প্রথমতে আমি এরেস্ট করেছি তখন ঘরতে আমি ড্রাগস পাইছি With a firm eye on the Indo-Pacific region, the meeting of quarterlateral dialogue kicked off in Tokyo on Tuesday to review the progress made by the four member countries. The summit in Tokyo is the fourth interaction of Quad leaders since their first virtual meeting in March 2021, in-person summit in Washington, D.C. in September 2021 and virtual meeting in March 2022. The Quad leader, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese of Australia, Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida of Japan and President Joe Biden of the United States will also exchange their views about developments in the region and global issues of mutual interest. The Quad cooperation is anchored in the shared values of democracy, international law and rules-based international order and a vision for a free, open and inclusive in Pacific. Quad's cooperation efforts have included working together on climate action. Quad's Infrastructure Coordination Group has been deliberating on supporting sustainable and demand-driven infrastructure in the region in a manner that does not burden countries of the region with unsustainable debt. Cooperation on critical and security of critical cyber infrastructure are other key priority areas of cooperative measures in the Quad. The four countries have also been discussing continued cooperation on COVID response and post-COVID management of economy and health infrastructure. This will be the second in-person Quad Leaders Summit. It will be followed by the Quad Fellowship event. Prime Minister Narendra Modi met former Japanese Prime Minister Yoshiro Mori and Shinzo Abe on Tuesday in Tokyo, Japan. Prime Minister appreciated the significant contributions made by Japan India Association under the leadership of Yoshiro Mori in promoting exchanges between India and Japan in political, economic and cultural fields. Prime Minister conveyed his best wishes to Shinzo Abe on his new responsibilities and looked forward to the JIA continuing its important role. The leaders also discussed the broad canvas of India-Japan special strategic and global partnership as well as the shared vision of India and Japan for a peaceful, stable and prosperous Indo-Pacific. Discussions were held on ways to further promote cultural and people-to-people -people ties. United States President Joe Biden held a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on May 24 in Tokyo, Japan. The U.S. President expressed his happiness over the renewal of Indo-U.S. Vaccine Action Program. He is pleased that the countries have reached an agreement for U.S. Development Finance Corporation to continue this important work in India, supporting vaccine production and clean energy initiatives, Biden said. He is also glad that they are renewing the Indo-U.S. Vaccine Action Program, the U.S. President said. They also discuss the ongoing effects of Russia's brutal and non-justified invasion of Ukraine and the effect it has on the entire global world order, he added. reached agreement for the U.S. Development Finance Corporation to continue its important work in India, supporting vaccine production, clean energy initiatives, and uh, I'm also glad we're renewing the Indo-U.S. Vaccine Action Program. We also discussed the ongoing effects of Russia's uh, brutal and unjustified invasion of Ukraine and the effect it has on the entire global world order. And uh, the U.S. and India are going to continue
consulting closely on how to mitigate these negative effects. Mr. Prime Minister, there's so much that our countries can and will do together, and I'm committed to uh, making U.S.-India partnership among the closest. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held bilateral talks with the Australian counterpart Anthony Albanese in Tokyo, Japan on May 24. Both the leaders are in Tokyo for the fourth interaction of the Quad Leaders Summit. The Quad Summit provides an opportunity for the leaders to exchange views about developments in the Indo-Pacific region. After sacking Punjab Health Minister Vijay Singla following corruption charges, Chief Minister Bhagwan Man on Tuesday said Amadmi Party has zero tolerance policy against corruption. Punjab's anti-corruption branch also arrested the Minister Vijay Singla following corruption allegations against him. Speaking on the matter, CM Man said that nobody knew about it, had he wanted it, could have brushed it under the carpet. But he would have broken the trust of people who trusted him. Further, Man said a case had come to his knowledge. A minister of his government was demanding a 1% commission for every tender. I took it very seriously, Man stated. Man also said that he is taking strict actions against Vijay Sangla. Man added that Sangla had indulged in corruption in the debt of and confessed to it. AAP has zero tolerance policy against corruption, said Man. Earlier in the year 2015, the Delhi chief minister had sacked one of his ministers in a corruption case, said the Punjab CMO. Samajwadi party leader Azam Khan alleged that once an inspector in the jail threatened him to go underground, otherwise he can get encountered. You have several cases against you. You can get encountered. Then it is difficult to say what my journey is in the face of such dangers, the Samajwadi party leader said. बड़ी जेल में इंस्पेक्टर ये थ्रेड दे सकता है अरे भाई वो घूमेगा तो जाएगा आप पर बहुत मुकदमे हैं ऐसा न हो कि आपका है जब इतने खतरे हैं तो ये कहना कि मेरा सफर कहाँ का है मुझे खुद ही नहीं पता Government of Gujarat signed a memorandum of understanding with the Energy Policy Institute at the University of Chicago and Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab in Gandhinagar. The MOU was signed to set up India's first carbon market. The market will provide a growth-friendly approach to tackling climate change. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.